Good evening. Welcome to the Capital Program Committee meeting of Tuesday, January 17th at 6 p.m. Calling the meeting to order here. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So on our agenda, we're just going to start out with the uh, um, introduction of our members. I'm Peter Caruso. I'm the town administrator. I'm also the chair of the committee here. And uh, with me to my right. Yes, Jennifer Gill. I'm chair of the board of selectmen and vice chair of the capital program committee. I'm Steve Tringali. I'm the uh, secretary of this humble committee. <laughs> Jason Milley, uh, playing board member. And welcome to Jason. He's new and... Uh, Take it easy, We're happy man. to have you here. We'll take it easy. <laughs> Absolutely. You're here to learn. Um, and we might uh, have uh, Jeff Pettit pop in uh, remotely, so we're set up for that in case he does. Uh, we've given him the link, and I know that he was traveling. And we are a committee of five at this stage, so tonight with the four, just the four of us, uh, four out of seven is a full committee. Uh, we have a quorum. Um, we are missing a representative from the Finance Committee to be uh, assigned as well as uh, looking for another uh, person from the community to be appointed by the moderator. So we welcome uh, uh, filling out the full membership of seven. Next on the agenda, we have reorganization of committee leadership. And, uh, and because we're at the start of a new year, a new season, it's the opportunity to uh, uh, change the leadership uh, where, you know, I'm happy to step aside and uh, <laughs> find somebody else to step forward. I think the, when I got to it, everybody stepped back and I was stuck <laughs> stepping forward. Um, but so if anybody has any aspirations or interest in any one of these particular positions, um, this is the opportunity to make a change and we can do that with the four of us or we can defer it until the next meeting. With we have more members. So yeah, I think maybe thoughts. we should wait till the next meeting um, because I think for the finance committee, they may maybe have, have someone. Well, I, I can't remember. Them. We have I have a lot of things jumbled in my head all the time. So, but he might there might be someone from okay. finance. So then we could at least have that person and then Jeff. Yeah. And then I think that would. Yeah, to expand our group by. Couple more, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense to me. And think okay. about if you, anybody has any aspirations. I did prepare the agenda, so I'm happy to get through it all this evening. So uh, let's see what we can do here. So next up, I had um, as new business. I just want to give a heads up that uh, you know in your packets, I had provided you the Millville's FY24 um, budget guidance letter, and Jen seen this more than once. Yes, I have. And that's just for info only for the members here, okay? Uh, you know, the public is welcome to see it as well, but this is just to help bring you all up to speed and get back into the game of the Capital Program Committee, okay? Um, also, just po pointing out that the Board of Selectmen, um, the Finance Committees of uh, both towns will be meeting with BMR to go over their budget on February 13th at 7 p.m. And... Uh, I did meet with uh, Dr. DeFalco today to go over the first draft of their budget. It doesn't w relate to us directly, except for the fact that he did provide me um, a schedule today of their capital budget, part of their budget. And uh, based on, uh, compared to last year, it's about a $30,000 increase uh, okay. uh, in debt service is really what it is that Millville has in our operating budget related to M, uh, BMR's capital, and it's uh, and w one of the increases about twenty thousand for they bonded the boiler to the tune of seven hundred thousand dollars, the MES boiler, mm -hmm. and that's a direct pass through cost to the town of Millville. And in the bonding, previously in last year's budget, we had just interest payments of twenty two thousand. The increase of another twenty is now we're paying. Pure debt service, which includes the, you know, the capital piece of it, the, the paying down the bond. What was that number again? It was seven. Uh, how much more? Uh, they added seven hundred. They bonded seven hundred three thousand. So I'll, I can send you this later, but uh, I'm just giving just sort of the big picture things. The other increases he estimated uh, for asbestos um, 
he thinks it'll be less, but he put in two, 250000 for the final year of the asbestos remediation of the high school, and our piece would be about 63000 which is almost 10000 more than we had last year. Uh, he thinks it'll be come down, so we don't know the final number, but I do know that the Board of Selectmen have, have already authorized for a use of ARPA funds to pay for that, and just like we did uh, in for fiscal 23. So in any event, we're looking at, a, uh, based on the schedule you provided me today, debt service to Millville of 218000 in their budget versus 192000 last year. We don't have to get into the particulars, but those are the ballpark numbers. Um, and no additional, the one thing I'll point out is no additional debt types of charges for the repairs and maintenance. And we have on the agenda a little bit later, update on uh, what's going on with the BMR facilities. Mm -hmm. So they haven't asked for any uh, capital to make any repairs and maintenance that's uh, on their dance cards over there. I have a okay. question. On the 18K increase for the debt service, can we pull that from ARPA as well? Or could we pull that from stabilization if we wanted to? I'm just... Yeah, I, well, so the funding source can be determined by the town. Okay. Right? Which could be ARPA. Yet, but yeah, that's, yeah, a, I'm that's just, a thought. Yeah, yeah, thinking about other things. Because I, I don't know what other that's right. increases we might have. Um, and this is not consistent. Right. Whereas it, other expenses, like salaries and stuff, would be consistent. That's right. So further to that, so uh, the operating budget draft that he provided me... Um, will show overall in their operating costs uh, about a 3.6% increase uh, year to year, 20, FY24 to FY23. What he doesn't have is the um, uh, minimum local contributions for each town. Mm -hmm. That hasn't been determined. He won't get that from the state until March 1st. Yeah, so yeah March or April, right? that's, and, that's usually late. Yeah, that's very late. It's new leadership and whatnot. So. And they have to finalize their budget uh, on the 13th. So they're, they're gonna, they may be doing some scrambling for two weeks there in the beginning of March to make it work. Uh, so we don't really know what Millville's assessment is likely to be. We just know that the overall increase is 3.6%, and they have fewer offsets available like they had last year of various grant funds and so forth that they use. So uh, time will tell what we really will be facing. Okay, so that's on that agenda item. Um, I, we have in there, I provided you uh, prior capital request forms, including the most recent one that worked for this committee the last two years in a row, and I see no reason to do otherwise. I just provided, you know, what's in files from the town that mm -hmm. years past, but it seems unwieldy, so I think Sure. My recommendation would be to go forward with what we did, which I know one person at this lead table worked very hard to create, <laughs> and it wasn't me. Um, but I think it worked very well. The, the other one's just too complicated. I, if I were a department head, I'd be like, well, I'm not sure what I want to do with this. It's kind of this redundant, one's, a little confusing. Yeah, yeah if, if they this know is that very one, straightforward. Like that one, why and change it? It gave us the information we needed to start the conversation and evaluation. So I. I I'd, I'd look to just use this one again unless anybody has any objections. I might add in there one item. I will change who they communicate with to the, you know, myself as well. I think I included that. But also I'll add an 11th item. Just ask for the five-year sort of identify items that you think you might need over five years because, you know, we have to have that five-year projection. So uh, I'll, I'll move forward with this, and I'll get this out to department heads uh, sure. in the next day or two. In my world, there would have been something asking for a return on investment, like well, how long, yep. you know, what, 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 how, how it's going to benefit us, what's going to save us, that sort of thing. Right. So I think we sort of got that um, financial justification, yeah. you know, in in sort of layman's terms. Yep. Yeah. But, no, it's yeah, but, but I'm saying I understand it, and it's very simple. So. And and it's a it's also a tool. See, so let's say. The police chief says, I'm going to need a new cruiser. He's going to put in that request. He'll identify it, ballpark the number, fill in some of these blanks on the right, you know, fill in the explanations. And then 
we can probe him further yeah. on exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah, like, and, and a lot of the stuff, there is no return on investment, like a cruiser. It's yeah. not, you know. Yeah. But he can give us the backstory. Well, there is, you know, because if you replace yeah. instead of having to repair, you know, that yeah, type of thing. So, yeah, we, we've spent X amount on repairs the last five years. Look, we need a new one. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's yeah. a money pit, you're right. Yeah. It makes it easier for the public to consume it as well, you know. That's right. That's right. Yep. And so just a little, a little further background, we've used ARPA funds for a number of items that typically show up on this in the last year or so. You know, the fire departments had, you know, 16 grand for a, a chesty compressor yeah. machine and things like that that we've funded out of ARPA and been fortunate to be able I'm, to do that. I'm the guy watching on the videos on YouTube. I'm so the, you pay attention. I'm, I'm the views, the, yeah. <laughs> on both of them. <laughs> yeah. I fell asleep the first time I had to watch it twice. <laughs> Are they catching our good sides, Absolutely. by the way? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But, but that's good. It's just worth re reminding ourselves because that gravy train isn't going to last forever, right? Um, so there's that. Uh, then for thought for the next meeting would be, you know, I have departmental uh, liaisons. And you can see where we had Preston and Jerry in there are, are going to be vacancies. So I'm, I'm looking at you mostly, Jason, because sure. um, you may – have something in particular you might want to participate in. We we might want to move things around, but I kind of like the the way it is with the old, you know, the existing yeah. folks. You know, it's it's an opportunity to get to meet department heads, to get to be not necessarily a champion for their cause, but help them articulate their need um, in concert with the form right. information, right? And also just be up to date to what their longer term needs are and things like that helps i think they the department heads feel um you know better appreciated and better able to be understood in that regard besides talking to somebody like me or, or jen you know uh, mm -hmm. only you know so so Making think scary. about that so we'll we'll <laughs> add this to the next meeting's agenda to see if we can fill in the blanks okay how's that sound sounds great that makes sense. okay and then i provided just some background information um, to get everybody sort of up to speed to today based on where we were in the past, right? So, you know, here's what uh, a certain someone at this table who did a lot of work to write up that wasn't me to include in the annual town report, okay, which is the capital program committee summary in the annual town report. And, you know, that's worth a read, brings you up to where we were last year, okay? Then there was a summer update that I sent around to folks in here. It's uh, just uh, it was an August email, um, which provides a reasonable summary. Particularly, you know, I talk about the fire department, and I think they have a whole bunch of needs, and it, their priorities can change day to day. So, you know, this shows some of the big needs, and those are some big ticket items um, that they need to really fine tune what they really need, and we. I think have to be um, pretty particular about making sure we ask the right questions about those needs, uh, because otherwise it can be big money adds up fast yeah. that we may not be able to find. I think um, so. Anyway, I, I put that in there. You know, I have the old. Uh, so I'll, I'll get into that as part of the background for these items that also had in there, and maybe the order is off. Uh, you know, the, this fairly lengthy summary on the uh, Blacks, the BMR school building oh, yeah. project. Yep. All right. So that's that's a very good read uh, yep. to get up to speed. And uh, since it's on our agenda, mm -hmm. I'll just talk to that a bit. Um, it uh, They did get accepted by MSBA into the program. So I, I, I sat on the meeting they had my yeah, two, three a couple weeks, of ago. weeks ago. It was, yeah. wasn't really anything new or different, but you know, same same story. But at least it's consistent. I sat in on too. It was the last week, right? The Zoom. Yeah, yeah. I sat in on yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, so, uh, so the next step in their process really is to to educate folks about what's coming, mm -hmm. right? And what's coming in the fall will be a request for uh, feasibility study funding, mm -hmm. and we don't know the magnitude of that, but I think yeah. we. We've seen that the magnitude of it seems to have increased 
yeah. in discussions. They first started talking, it was 600, then it's 800, now it's probably a million. million and a half. I expect yeah. it'll be a million and a half. Yeah. That's right. Just for the feasibility study. Just for the feasibility yeah. study. And we paid 25% yeah. of that. So, um, so that'll be interesting, more to follow. I, in watching that, and I mentioned this to Jason, I think they've got to really fine tune um, their messaging to also include better uh, than what I saw the other night. Um, the alternative of repairing and, you know, the high school facility to fix it to a point where it's just the same high school mm -hmm. that doesn't meet, yeah. you know, ongoing educational needs to into the future at a probably a higher net cost to the community than the net cost of one of the outcomes of the feasibility study of the new high school facility and who knows, Without the you know, benefits of a new bringing one. those down. So they really got to do the this or that, you know, there's, there's some element of repair and maintenance that you cannot avoid and that compared to the, mm -hmm. the best solution that would come out of the feasibility study. And I, I think this committee hopefully is going to keep them very honest about the feasibility study will look into not just do what they're planning to do on the high school or what they think they want to do. It's really looking for the right solution that will work for both communities. Based yeah. on all available buildings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because you know the first answer out of everyone's mouth is going to be, well, it was good enough for me. What do they need just to fix it? So you're right. That's $50 million, but that's just to repair. That's not to improve anything or advance anything. Yeah, but and that's right. what they, we would They need to paying. explain that better. Yeah, right. but but in that meeting, the the number fifty million. Yeah. My impression was it was sixty million, mm -hmm. and and that was in three year ago or two yeah. year ago dollars, mm -hmm. and today's dollars it's more like a hundred million of repairs. So they got to get the right number there. Yeah, and prioritize. I think they were the committee part of their ta the subcommittees of BMR and Capital mm -hmm. were, were to prioritize the must have repairs to at least keep the lights on. So that said, because the where they get to might take five or seven years, they're still going to have to deal with certain repairs to keep the lights on and the mm -hmm. just to you get know there. keep to get the get there. So, mm -hmm. but there was none of that in this capital thing I saw right now for a capital request. So anyway, that uh, no answers, just things to think about, right? Um, on the old town hall, here was a one-page summary, you know, included in there by uh, drafted up by uh, Joe Fitzpatrick, our uh, favorite building inspector. Um, okay. And uh, <laughs> we, too. we, we. So this is the repair and reuse uh, model. And on Friday, the engineers going in to look, to take measurements and going to come forth with uh, stamped engineering drawings of the roof repair mm -hmm. uh, from which then we can proceed on the design and build you yeah. know RFP in that process which would include HVAC would include cleanup of things you know paint yeah. and tiles and ceiling yeah. tiles and stuff and and repair of the floor and maybe some foundational things but we still have no I keep probing Joe every time I see him and we still have a great sense that you know the 500 number that we keep throwing around is still a realistic number to get this done you know and it's not changing walls or any of that sort of thing yeah. so now where are we at with the, the niche app study on that i thought i haven't that, done anything I that, that you know that priority number one well whatever no, year ago no it was. yeah i mean that's been a, the funding is approved for that yeah. but we haven't taken that step you know i think I think we had to do that also if we were going to tear it down. Yeah, right. we need to know and, what we're dealing with. Yeah, and I don't know that, I think now the direction is not to tear it down. Um, but I think that's a question for Joe and maybe this engineering yes. firm. Is, yes, Does this need to be done um, to help with anything? And, right. Because in the, you know, in a, it's, we go out for RFP, part of the process will be including that in the list of things we'd be asking for, mm -hmm. right? And they'll caveat what they say depending on bedrock and who knows, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So, and depending on, you know, uh, waste removal materials and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
public safety. Um, you know, I expect uh, Chief Coop will be putting forth, uh, you know, it's his cycle for a uh, cruiser. Yep, we talked about that. He and I met in December, in December. And so I asked him about buildings and things like that. He said, are we, he goes, are we really going to fix the town hall and like take, I'm like, yes, we're really going to do that. He's like, okay, well, if we do that, and then we talked about making some adjustments to the police station at the same time. Yeah. So he's not going to put anything in for buildings until we, because that, that project's going to be done together, but the police car is it for him for this year. He might also put in the uh, incident command vehicle to replace the yes. uh, admin vehicle that, uh, is provided to him and it, and there is and e there was some money earmarked but i haven't seen a piece of paper from the, usually if it's ear, if it's real i gotta sign a contract and i don't have that yet so we're we're still chasing uh you know rep soder and his team around on where does his retired that. vehicle go to so some stay you know they'll stay in the rot in the sort of the back rotation um we haven't we have two right now that are used for details and yeah. things like that they generally um, don't get as much mileage either that's correct they've exceeded yeah. their life and they don't need us uh, they're, yeah. so they're not used on on uh, um you know daily uh, not, not really used on a daily basis um so we'll see uh, but in any event so there was to, uh, the talk of 25 grand available from state arpa money to help fund this incident command vehicle, which would supplement uh, what the town might have to provide out of its, uh, basically its uh, public safety stabilization fund. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, fire department, you saw in my August emails, uh, you know, brief summary of some of the challenges there. Um, so we'll, we'll have to get Ch uh, Chief Liard and uh, his uh, favorite uh, lieutenant there to figure out what it is they really want because depending yeah. on the day it, it's one thing versus another the biggest ticket was the pump right the well so there was talk of a pump station but then there's talk of you know uh, repairing and replacing a whole bunch of hydrants and then there's talk of the the water tower up at mes that yeah. provides fire suppression there but one might argue maybe that's not so bad as we think it is, and maybe it needs to be inspected before we want right. to go spend a couple hundred grand on something like that. Um, and the pump station, you know, it's a million bucks to pay for um, yeah. uh, in the national grid to bring three-phase power down there. So that alone is a, a killer. And, gee, do you really need a pump station when all you use it for is to get brief pumping until the pumper truck arrives from... Uh, Burrowsville or whatever it is so anyway um, so those are good conversations to go through in the liaison and myself you know we pick at those guys to make sure they really know what they really want and and then we look for maybe there's other ways to fund it um, yeah I'll see if I can set up a zoom maybe me you and Chief Liard maybe yeah. in the evening yeah or I can do late afternoons yep. as well that would be great. Okay, I'll take that action. Highway, you know, we'll find out what the needs are right now. The salt shed RFP is in process of being drafted. Uh, and we, you know, we have funding for that available up to 100 grand. You know, the town's allocated 25 out of ARPA and there's 75 grand, you that's know, from the state that's available. We have till deal. the end of yeah. 2027 to spend that money. So, um We'll see, you know, we keep trying to work with Brian on getting what he really needs there, but uh, right now we're moving that ball forward. And then the only other thing I'd also say on highway is we did a survey, the board selectman sent out a survey and people commented, so what was the biggest thing for the town? And it was overwhelmingly roads. <laughs> like, people like, you need to fix the roads, the roads, Potholes the roads, the roads, yeah. Like so, um, I know we're gonna talk about stabilization balances, but our, General stabilization is quite healthy. So if it was 75, I don't know how much it cost to, plow, to pave a road or whatever, but if it was say $100,000 to do one whole road, we might pick one road mm -hmm. this year to do and see how that goes. And in addition to the other state funding that we get the chapter 90. Chapter 90. 90. 90. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the, what's the other thing? So what we have right yeah. now is Brian has a $40,000 budget and he's only used a couple of grand out of it okay. for 
just out of the operating budget for high roadway materials, which is typically what he would use for drains and potholes and who knows what. Separately, we have RAP. It's winter recovery something or other money, W-R-A-P. Uh, that's a one-time thing that the state authorized, divvied out based on the same ratios as they do Chapter 90 funds, and the amount is 74 grand. It has to be used before June 30th of this year, and it can be used for any roadway type of repair. Um, so that's there. And, you know, to the extent roads, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're we haven't, gotten any uh, at this stage because we have nothing particular to try to get, but there there is certainly money out there for stormwater drainage and things like that. Um, and when you do the stormwater drain, you're ripping up a road, so you got to get the road back in order, things like that. So there's opportunities there in the future as well. Um, and we'll get to stabilization two clicks down here. Um, other departments, I don't know. We may need a, a server type of thing, and we have a limited amount from ARPA money already approved mm -hmm. for that in uh, the back room here. I don't know that it's enough to cover it. Um, uh, we've yeah, so uh, it's ten grand. Yeah, uh, I have no idea what that yep. stuff costs. Yeah, so it might, that might be half of what it really is, um, but we can adapt if uh, there, there's nothing urgent there, but it's on the sort of the horizon. Um, we have, uh, we're in, Joe's in the process of implementing his, uh, online permitting system and, uh, that was approved using ARPA funds by the board of selectmen. So, uh, that's all good. And it looks like a nice system. He's been work, he's worked with it in the past at one of his other, uh, former lives. I don't have really anything else on other departments that I can think of off the top. Library, you know, ARPA took care of their uh, HVAC system need mm -hmm. uh, recently. So, uh, and that was the only real capital thing that was on their eyes. But we'll, we'll see what comes out of the request that goes out, right? We'll get more current. Um, ARPA spending funding to date. So there you see what, what's been approved by the BOS. There's a schedule in there. What's been spent in 22, what was spent in 23, and the current balance approved and not yet spent. And then they recently uh, approved, subject to, you know, opportunity needs and whatnot that surface, some major things. So 250 grand for town hall roof repair and uh, HVAC. So literally half of that project uh, as we envision it. Uh, some police station upgrades, some fire station upgrades, as you see there. Some tree pruning, which uh, yes. you know will help with uh, a whole bunch of power oh, issues yeah. as they go forward. Because uh, I'll lose power just by you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> some MES water upgrades and uh, consulting, and including there is the FY24 BMR asbestos. So. And we still have some money to reallocate as as may be available that has been previously been allocated and so yep. forth. Okay. So let's, let's on that page, the um, the BBT that that laser thing that they had requested. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did that get bought and paid for, or where, where yep. does that stand? Yep. And so that was spent. Blackstone Valley Regional School. That's the twenty-two grand. Yeah. And it was spent in FY23. Yeah, because remember that, that came, and I think, Jen, you and I were the only ones that were kind of waiting on more info or something. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, we, we didn't have a, a full vote on that. I think it was just like a straw I, They came only. to the Board of Selectmen. Did they? Yeah, yeah, on May 16th. Okay. I would have jumped all over them on that. But yeah. Whatever. So, all right. So they count me as a no vote. That's okay. <laughs> so anybody through. Yeah. But, so it did go through. Yeah. Any other questions on this guy here? No. No. That looks good. Okay. And then I included a schedule of uh, stabilization funds. I have one update that this was as of June 6, 2022. Okay. And so the numbers you see for OPEB stabilization, which is really OPEB trust fund, uh, 193,000. Mm -hmm. uh, Millville's been pretty good about putting money away there whenever the money's available. 
Uh, general stabilization, you have 884,000. That's a good number. That's the current balance. Capital stabilization, 206,000 and some change. That's a good number. And then public safety stabilization, actually, as of June 30th, 22, which was posted later, is now 287,000. So oh, wow. there's 51,000 of our half of the ambulance receipts for fiscal 22 were posted there since that number you see on the schedule. So we have more money in there than one last thought. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the notes on my phone, so it's a little smaller, but because we talked about the ARPA funds for the police co the command vehicle, we didn't put any aside? No. Okay, out of our funds? No. Okay, because we were waiting to hear from them. Correct. Okay. Yep, that's purely from the state, the 25 grand I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. balance would come out of presumably public safety stabilization. Yeah. And also, if, I, if I'll remind you, in, his oper in Chief Coop's operating budget is a lease payment line item for 15000 that we don't need anymore. So he isn't using it this year. So there's, if we you know, wanted to pull the trigger faster than, we can still pull the trigger by town meeting if need be. Mm -hmm. Spending that money as part of the, you so know. Saving 15 on the lease, getting 25 from the state. And the balance out of public safety yeah. stabilization. Just That's right. Quite a bargain. Right. That's right, it's a good deal. Yeah. That's right. Um, and that's really uh, all I had uh, other than, you know, we have public forum if anybody wishes to speak. And uh, I think uh, we're good on that one. <laughs> so then we had minutes. And you'll see that Steve is an outstanding minute writer. He is perhaps Demon one of the best stuff. I've ever seen. <laughs> you and you would obviously recuse yourself. Absolutely. But, uh, Abstain. Abstain, and I think because of that, we probably want to wait for uh, Jeff. Okay, All that's right. fine. Been kicking around since April, so yeah, a couple yeah. more weeks, yeah. no but big deal. I had no changes. No one's to been watch beating down the door. <laughs> I had no changes to watch your route, so I think yeah. we're now we're that happy. we record everything. I think there's less yeah. demand yeah. for yeah. the minutes. Yeah, we do it because for protocol and rules. But... Yeah, jump on YouTube and you can find it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And. Uh, so I had nothing further on, uh, I had nothing in uh, 48 hours to uh, bring up that's not on this agenda. Um, and so if anybody had any other thoughts before we talk about the next meeting and time and location? Um, I had a quick question because I'm looking at the stabilization and usually free cash flows into that. Would you know when we'll have that all set? Oh, if only I knew. Uh, I know. It's before like the town meeting, I've been, uh, but okay. uh, I hope before then. Okay. We okay. said that the last time it didn't quite we happen. We did. It didn't quite happen. No. Hopefully so, this year will be the. Yes. This year will be the year. Yes. Well, we have Jane, who's new. Yep. And uh, Tara's been, you know, doing her thing behind the scenes. Um, so. Okay. Everybody knows how important it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on that? So what do you think of it like uh, like this this Tuesday evening at six o'clock work well for folks and maybe yeah. another one in three weeks, which I think in my it's February seventh. Yeah, yeah, would that work? So that'll be the date. Do we have a board selection meeting on the sixth? Six. Right. So it'll be. So I don't was mind. I think in three weeks, or was I thinking? Uh, well, four weeks would be February fourteenth. Yep. Which is Valentine's it Day. It is Valentine's well, Day. Well, the thing I'm looking at, it's like the next significant meeting is at BMR FinCom. Which That's is right. on the 13th. 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 That's right. Yeah. So would it make sense to have it beyond that? That's fine. Maybe we have like a the DOS meeting on the 21st. So then uh, otherwise we're into a Wednesday or something. Yeah. We could do the 15th that Wednesday. Or the, the I mean, it's school vacation week. I think that should be okay. Um, I may be traveling to Israel in early February. Um, I mean, of course, you can help me without me. Um, could I do this meeting? So I have there? my phone, but I also use this because I, I see the big picture. Six. Old school. What time hmm? would that be? That'd be 1 a.m. Yeah. yeah, I probably won't be joining. So how about the 15th? Yeah, let's try the 15th. Yeah. That's fine. Would that work? Israel yeah. is pretty cool. Okay. All right. Six o'clock works? Yes. Good. All right. Here? Sure. Sure.
Is it better for you to do Zoom on Wednesday? I mean, I don't well, mind. Well, Zoom it is, but I'm happy to do this here because okay. I think it's good to yeah. be together. Yeah. And uh, I think we'll have some meaty stuff to talk about because it'll be after the EMR. EMR. Yeah, okay. I'll have some numbers for us. And maybe we'll also have info, you know, the sheets returned from the department heads to talk about. So the okay. agenda might include um, some department heads to come in and talk. And Brian is coming to our meeting on February 23rd, right? Mulally on highway? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's, the, that's the plan. That's on a draft agenda. Okay. And uh, so we'll if Brian chasing them. Yeah, yes. so that would be like the, the big stuff I think would be highway. Like we talked about the road stuff and then the school. Mm-hmm. So if we have yep. all that, and then, yeah. So, yeah, I think the 15th. Is there a something. triage list on the roads? Like what's bad, what needs immediate attention, that type of thing? Those um, are very good questions. Yeah, I don't know. I just, so people tell me, like, these Here's are bad. Probably, right? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. No, Chester Hill's not right too now? bad. Um, Three years? They, yeah. uh, like, people will just email, email me, and then I'll drive down the road. So, Brian, like, Brian would know. Yeah, so he'll right. probably know. But so the ones I hear, Old Chestnut Hill Road, and that's a bus route, too. So that's. Yeah, that's bad. Hill Street, I, I heard is bad, and I've driven down it, and it is bad. And then, like, Lincoln Street's not so great. Lincoln Street and Thayer Street are not amazing, although there are other words that are worse. The issue is that Lincoln Street and Thayer Street are very well traveled roads too. Thayer so, brings you to the school too. Right? right, so that might get bumped up in priority over something that's a little bit of a less traveled road. But right. I guess this would be a call out to people. Facebook, put, I have a Facebook page, post your road that you want. I know there'll be like a billion people. And then you can email me at selectman3 at millvillema.org, and I will be happy to list that out. You can contact Brian, you can contact Peter, town admin at millvillema.org. And his cell phone number is, no, I'm just kidding. I'll do it. <laughs> Which one? I got two. I, I, I know. The, the bat phone and one the throw. Right. That's right. <laughs> so, but like people should vote on the roads because we can, or like, yeah, that's right. Let us know, and then we can take that into consideration as well. It won't be the only deciding factor, but it's certainly an influencer. If I hear from 50 people, and 50 people I'll say road A needs to get done, that's a lot. That's right. Well, good. This was uh, great. Uh, I'm Thanks glad so you joined us. Thank you. Yeah, me too. And, uh, so I should I make a motion to I adjourn the meeting? I think so, yes. So I move that we adjourn the Capital Program Committee meeting at 6.38 p.m. on January 17th, 2023. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Unanimous. Thank you so much.